Welcome to another episode of How to Pass the Math, FSA, Grade 5 Edition. Today, we are going to be continuing our learning for volume in the real world. It's Lesson 20 today, and for all you teachers out there, this is hitting this following the following standard up here. It's maths.5.md.3.5. So, let's get busy with our volume and let me teach you. Example one, a box in the shape of a rectangular prism has the dimensions shown. Four inches times five, oh, sorry, four inches for the width, five inches for the height, and six inches for our length. What is the volume in cubic inches of the box? So, how do we find volume? Well, the volume, I think this is also on your reference sheet, the volume is the length times the height, width times the height, or it could be the width times the length times the height. It does not matter the order that you put the numbers in. Okay, so four times five times six. Four times five times six. Four times five is 20 times six equals 120. Now I'm going to write 120 in my equation editor. I would punch in one, two, and zero, but I want you to be aware of that the answer should really be 120 cubic inches, or you can write it like this. This is the fancy middle school way to write it. 120 inches cubed, either way. But you don't have the option to write that in your equation editor. Just wanna make you aware of it. We're done with this one. Example two, coming to a classroom or home near you. Hi guys, it's me right here. I moved this a little bit closer so you could see what I was doing because I have to work within the grid. So I'm right here, don't worry. I know you're not worried. A box in the shape of a rectangular prism has a height of five feet and a volume of 105 feet. So I'm gonna kind of model that out here. There's a box in the shape of a rectangular prism. Okay. And it has a height of five feet and the entire volume equals 105 feet cubed or cubic feet. So we need to find what the base would be. Use the connect line tool to draw a possible base because we also have base times height could equal, whoops, sorry, could equal the volume because the base is really the length times the width. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We know what part of it is. So if the volume equals the base times the height, and we know that our height is five, and we're trying to find out what our base is, but we know this, that the volume is 105, then really we could do 105, use our inverse of dividing by five, so five goes into 10 two times, five goes into five one time, oh, bring the five down, five goes into five one time, and then you have a remainder of zero. So 21 times five equals our volume. So we need to have a base that equals 21, so the length times the width. So all I need to do, what, what times what equals 21? Three times seven or seven times three, right? That would be our easiest way. So what I'm gonna do is say, go over three. One, two, one, two, three. I'm gonna go down seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Line up all my dots and connect them. And this could be a possible base, okay? Explore with this when you get to your um, when you're practicing this, the test before you take it, this tool. So three and seven. You could have done seven up here and three going down, it doesn't matter. But you just need a base that would equal 21 when you multiply them. Match each rectangular prism with the correct 
volume. So up here it says 16 cubic inches. We have 24 cubic inches right there. And we have two rectangular prisms. So what I'm gonna do is solve the volume and then match it up. So this one says the height is two times our length of four times our width of three. So two times four equals eight. Eight times three equals 24 cubic inches. So put a checkaroni right there. Now the next one says we have a height of two. Again, it doesn't matter the order that I write these in because of the associated property of multiplication. Um, our high length is eight and our width is two. One times eight equals eight. Eight times two equals 16. There, notice that I didn't just put a check right there that I actually made sure to solve it. That's what good mathematicians do. They make sure that they're accurate. Alrighty, example four, the dimensions of a rectangular prism are shown below. We've got a height of six, we have a length of eight, and we have a width of four. So I need to find the volume, and let me do that. Six times eight times four. Six times eight is 48, 48 times four. Let me do that over here to the side. 32, four times four is 16, 192. All right, so it's not 18 yards and it's not 18 cubic yards. It's not, it's either this one or this one. But remember for volume, we need that cubic yard. So some kids might see that right away, but it does not have the cubic yards that you need because volume, you get cubes, cubic units. Last one, uh, uh, exam, can't talk today. Example five. Select all the options that could be the dimensions of a rectangular prism with a volume of 144. So 144 cubic inches is what we're looking for. So we're gonna go through each one of these, solve them out and see if we get 144. So we got a length of six, a width of two, a height of 12, Six times two is 12, 12 times 12 equals 144. Yes. We've got a base, which is the length times the width of 12. And we've got a height of 12, 144. Yes. Length of 12, width of 12, height of 12. Well, 12 times 12 would be 144, but then when we multiply by another four, that would not be right. All right, next we have a base of 14, so that would be the length times the width, and then a height of four. So when I multiply those out, I need to do it vertically like this. That would be 16, that would be 56. So that is not going to work. And then length of two times a width times a height of not eight. Two, sorry, my brain went blank for a second. Two times nine is 18 times eight. Let's do this vertically. 18 times eight. Eight and eight went to the store and bought a Nintendo 64. Eight times one is eight plus six is 14, so 144. So those would be your correct answers. You need to select them all in order to get it right. Now it's time for me to motivate you. All right, fifth graders, fifth grade teachers, fifth grade parents, here's a motivational message for you before we depart for the day. Strong people, do not put others down. We have a big bullying problem in our world today. And people think like, oh, that person is so strong. Look at his muscles. Oh, it's cool that he puts people down. And all these shows about these cartoon episodes with the bully walking around and he's all strong and looking cool. And you know, it's funny that he's messing with people. It's not funny. Truly strong people don't put other people down. They lift people up. Think about that. If you're strong, you shouldn't be pushing somebody down, you should be pushing them up. And when I'm talking about strength, I'm not talking about the muscles. I mean, it's nice to have the muscles and to feel fit and all that, um, but I'm talking about in here. Your true strength is in here, and if you are truly a strong person in here and you have a strong 
genuine character, you don't bother putting other people down. You're trying to help somebody, trying to help other people. So look out for each other. And if you see bullying in your school, you need to report it to your teachers, to your parents, to your principal, whoever. Um, it needs to stop because it's not cool. All right, I'll talk to you guys later in the next video.